Welcome to the cockpit. My name's Ryan and I'll be your pilot tonight. I am so excited to talk to you guys tonight. Our topic is going to be rebuilding the New York Jets. I want to hear all your thoughts from the Senior Bowl, from free agency, the draft, all of that good stuff. Uh, I want to hear how you guys would rebuild the Jets. I see Heisenberg, J. Cole, Jeremy, WA2K, Eric, Joe, Eddie, Jacob. Thank you guys for coming in. Make sure you hit that like button on the way in. Uh, so you guys saw me release my rebuild of the New York Jets. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I am I feel like this changes every single day for me. I have different thoughts and different ways I want to approach the draft and for agency. <laughs> I can never hammer down just one. Like literally as soon as I'm done with one uh, one thing, I'm on to the next thing. I'm like, oh man, I can't believe I did it that way. <laughs> so I'm sure you guys probably have uh, similar thought process, I would, processes, I would think. We're going to do this the same way we do it every week. We're going to, you guys are going to hear my thoughts until about 8.30, and then I'll get your thoughts and how you would like to approach uh, rebuilding the New York Jets. So I guess let me take it back a little bit. Let's go uh, and think about the, the Senior Bowl, because I do think this is where the Jets are going to get a nice little chunk of their players, or at least a lot of their intel into how they're going to approach the draft. Um, we know a bunch of tight ends that are going to be there. Trey McBride is going to be the one highlighting the tight end show for the seniors and the New York Jets. He is my top tight end. Jeremy Ruckert is another popular name that's popping up. His dad was tweeting about the New York Jets and how he would love to have his son play here or his son would love to play here because he was a Jet fan growing up. That's really cool. Greg Van Roten is also a Jet fan. <laughs> he grew up on, I think it was Long Island. Um, so... As much as it's fun to have guys that are Jet fans as uh, as players on your team, it shouldn't be the ultimate reason you go for them. So you want to go for skill first, but definitely uh, if Ruckert can show and, and and mesh well with the coaching staff, I think he's got the, the athletic upside for sure. Um, I think that OSU offense highlighted their running back and wide receiver significantly more than the tight ends. I think he was like the fifth uh, option out there. I think draft – Network has him ranked as like a third or fourth round pick um, where you have guys uh, like Trey McBride. I think at the top of the class, probably projected somewhere early second, maybe late first. Um, so look, there's a lot of different ways the Jets can go. The big areas of concern for me heading into next year, I would say shoring up the offensive line in some capacity, because that's a really weird conversation. It's it's not There's not one way to fix this offensive line. Or, or how to progress the offensive line. Because you could be losing LDT if he has to go back and do his residency. Uh, for those of you that don't know, he's a Canadian doctor. Um, and they have to complete the residency within, I believe it's four or five years. And that is starting to come up for him. So he's trying to file for an extension due to extenuating circumstances. He's an NFL player. It's kind of, they should give him a pass for that, I think. Uh, but in the event we can't bring him back, we are losing our right guard. He's a free agent, uh, obviously. We do have Fant and Becton. At the tackle positions, Moses is a free agent. That's going to be a conversation that I think is going to be interesting. I don't know. I don't think they offer him a contract. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind it. He's rock solid, steady. Uh, he's not the best tackle that you could possibly have, but he's always available, which I think is is almost more important than, uh, like, say, like Becton, who has got a really high ceiling, but just can't seem to stay on the field. Uh, in theory, we should have Becton coming back. There's a whole conversation we could have about Becton too. I think that is a really, really odd situation. I think the only locks to be here next year, obviously, Fant, Becton, AVT, uh, and McGovern. McGovern, I know there's people want to get take a center. They want to move him over to guard. You could cut him in theory. I think you save like $9 million. I think that would be a bad move. So offensive line-wise, I think you have to target guard, and I think you have to target some type of tackle, whether it's bringing back Morgan Moses as your backup option or possibly going really high in the draft and drafting one. Um, there's no real right way to go about it. Wide receiver is going to be a big need for the New York Jets. You guys know I'm very high on the trade front. I think getting an established wide receiver for Zach Wilson is incredibly paramount. Like I have no problem going the draft route. I really don't because uh, hopefully this receiver will grow with us for the next four or five years. But I do think Zach Wilson going into year two, would benefit from a veteran wide receiver coming in uh, just because we saw roughly half the season it took for, for Elijah Moore to really get his feet under him and, and feel comfortable with the playbook. 
and start uh, feeling comfortable with an NFL speed. So I, I do think that's kind of where I, I lean free agency. I was very high on free agency. You guys know I want a Gallup. I want a Godwin. Those guys both appear to be going back to their uh, current teams and the Buccaneers and the Cowboys, uh, mainly because they have the ACL injuries and I think they don't want to have to learn a new playbook. I think it gets them back on a cheaper deal on a Super Bowl caliber team. Uh, and they'll hit free agency next year looking for that big contract. Uh, free agency. So where do you go? We heard rumors, or very, very loose terms, rumors. <laughs> some some BYU fan talking to Zach in a bar. That's the, those are the rumors we heard of uh, the Jets possibly going out and acquiring a prolific free agent wide receiver. Um, free agent wise, I don't think there's many guys that you could label as prolific. Uh, when I'm looking at the wide receiver court, Devontae Adams, clearly prolific. I don't think he's going to leave Green Bay. I think he's going back for another year, uh, whether it be by franchise tag or just staying with with Rodgers if Rodgers decides to stay there. Um, I do think that Mike Williams is an interesting option. I think he can be a, a legit number one wide receiver, but his health is a concern. And I think if I can speak for, for most Jet fans, if not all Jet fans, we would like to avoid the injury issues uh, when it comes to receivers uh, and players in general. We've had the highest amount of salary cap space on the IR the last two seasons. Um, you look around the league, you look, maybe Amari Cooper gets cut. Uh, the Allen Robinson connection to Robert Sala and the projected price of, of Robinson, I think is something that uh, Joe Douglas would, would be attracted to, but I don't know if I would label him as prolific. Um I think that's a little tough for me to go. And it's not exactly the route I'd want to go either. Um, I wouldn't hate it. I, th I think there's definitely definitely worse options. And you got to think of all these free agent wide receivers. I mean, put it this way. The reason I want to trade for a receiver is because they can't say no for the most part. <laughs> like you got to trade for them and then get them out of their current situation. You're now the this guy that or this team that has, has lifted them out of their situation. And now they want to be with you. Um, as opposed to a free agent where you have to try and lure them here with a bunch of dollars. And, and generally speaking, you're paying the, the Jets tax. You're getting guys that fit one particular scheme that may not fit your scheme. So when you trade, you're targeting a guy that you think is definitely going to fit your scheme. Not that you wouldn't do that in free agency. You obviously would. But um, guys like Calvin Ridley, guys like Michael Thomas, you know, Amari Cooper, maybe DK Metcalf. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe DK Metcalf. Uh Guys like those don't hit free agency. They never do. So you got to trade for one of them. Um, Ridley and Thomas and Metcalf are, are definitely of the elite bunch. But what are you willing to give up? Are you willing to give up 10th overall plus more to get DK Metcalf and a $100 million contract? That's a lot. That's a whole lot to give up for a receiver. I don't mind giving up a first round pick. Giving up a top 10 pick? You have to come down on price. Remember, Amari Cooper was traded for the 27th overall pick. DK Metcalf, I do think, is better than than Amari Cooper in some aspects. Like I, I think the route running is definitely on, on Cooper's side. Um, but the elite massiveness, the size, the speed of everything that, that DK has is just second to none. You can't teach that. So I understand why fans would want him. I've seen my inbox has been blown up. <laughs> blown up. You guys want DK or you want Ridley. A lot of you guys are afraid of Thomas. So how would you do it? Do you go about drafting a receiver? Do you go about fixing the offensive line in free agency? Do you go really high in the draft? I've said it before. I really want a reason to take N'Kobe Dean at 10. Really, 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 really want a reason. <laughs> and there's not, it's not that like he's, you know, the, the, the surefire lock of a prospect or whatever. There was, there was a, a tweet that I saw of him and it was a video clip. And I don't know if it was the semifinals or some other point in the season with him, but he winds up covering, dropping back into coverage. The linebacker next to him drops back into coverage, runs the wrong coverage. Nicobe Dean blocks the pass for the other guy and then gets in his face and holds him accountable. I love when players hold other players accountable. I think that is a really, really strong leadership trait. Um, and I think it's one, if you were to sort of try to identify guys in the first round, the Kobe Dean definitely brings the, the bark that he has with his bite. This guy is fast. I would love that. Trading down is interesting. 
What happens in a trade down situation? Do you go from four to eight, from four to 11, from four to even further down? Who knows? Normally, I wouldn't, in this particular situation where the Jets have so many draft picks, I would say I'm not for trading down. I would say this year, I'm in a weird spot. The fourth overall selection, I get this feeling. I think one of the edges is going to be there, and I think it's going to be Thibodeau. I think here's what's going to happen. New coach is going into Jacksonville. They've just spent money, meaning top, top, top picks, top picks on Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne. They've taken defensive ends two of the last three years. They're taking Evan Neal or insert whatever offensive tackle at the top of this draft. Or they're going to be willing to slide back a little bit to still get the player they want and let someone else jump up ahead. I don't think they go after Hutchinson. I don't think they go after Thibodeau. Let's say they sit tight, they take Neal. I think you look at the Texans and you look at the Lions. The Lions, I feel like Hutchinson is a lock to go there. They're not going to let the Michigan guy leave. At number three, you got the Texans. And this is where things really get interesting because I know with the new head coaching staff, it gives them a reason to possibly go quarterback. I think Mills has done enough where they could also roll it back with him. So there's going to be a lot of conversation in this top pick. We need a quarterback to go in front of us for one of those edges to fall to us. So, at number four, if one of the edges is there, I'm taking one of the edges. If not, I'm looking to trade down. I really am. It's not that I don't like Neil. I would take Neil. I think Neil offers the flexibility with Becton that you really want. I think I, it sucks that we have to spend such a high draft pick on an offensive lineman again after spending two top 11 pick or top 14 picks uh, on offensive line. But I think because of Becton's situation with the injuries, with the weight, I think you're probably looking at hedging your bets a little bit. I would say it would be early to start thinking about moving on from Makai Becton this year. But I will say 2023, entirely different story. I think what I would do is early in this draft, I look for someone like Neil, someone that can play guard, someone that can play tackle, someone like Icky from NC State, someone of that caliber that can kick inside, play guard, but give you the flexibility beyond this year to move that person out to tackle because you got Fant on a one-year contract. You're going to have this rookie coming in theoretically playing right guard. You got McGovern at center. You got AVT left guard, Becton at left tackle. Now, if Becton can't stay healthy, Fant is obviously going to kick over to the left-hand side. He did such a great job this year. Who knows? Maybe he starts there and Becton goes on the right-hand side. But I think in the event Becton gets hurt or, or can't stay healthy or can't, you know, he's getting dinged up. I think there is a real shot that they're going to hedge their bets. They're going to take a very versatile offensive lineman early in this draft, and they're going to give themselves the flexibility of potentially moving on from a Kai Becton, whether it be halfway through next season or at the end of uh, the 2022 campaign. So 2023 would be the earliest if you were to even think about moving on from a Kai Becton. I don't want to. I want this guy to be the rock-solid stud that we saw last year. Now, the issue with weight and injury, the guy doesn't look like he's got a weight problem. He looks yoked. But I will say this, when you have an injury and you can't work out to keep your weight down, um, I think that's definitely an issue. I want to see him fighting as hard as he can to get back. If he can get to like 360, maybe he can kind of keep his weight uh, maybe a little more under control. That would be fantastic. So we've talked about edge rusher, we've talked about receiver, we talked about offensive line. The only edge rusher I really, I guess let me touch back on edge rusher, because I, I, I have mentioned before that I wouldn't mind getting one in free agency. In free agency, I wouldn't mind getting a vet. Someone like a Justin Houston, someone like a, a Chandler Jones. If you got to pay him a, a decent amount of money for a year or two, no problems whatsoever. I don't think you can go into the draft hoping that you get one of the top two edges or that you like Karloftis enough at four. Um, I think bringing in an older edge 
allows you the the flexibility of having some depth anyway. Having a veteran presence. Obviously, Carl Lawson's in his what fifth year now, or I guess going into his sixth year. Um, we don't have that with Curry anymore. Curry wound up getting cut. You got Blair, who's not here anymore. He's interviewing with like the Packers or something like that. And you got Huff. So edgewise, I do think we could go with a veteran presence for a year or two, and that would not impede you from taking or drafting one of the top two edges or three edges if you like Karl Loftus enough. At number 10, I want to go all sorts of different ways. <laughs> Nicobe Dean is like, I, I love, love, love Trey Burks, but man, Nicobe Dean is someone I would really love to have on this team. Traylon Burks. Is he our Debo Samuel? You watch how Debo attacks the defense. Guy's an elite weapon. So do the Jets try to get that? Tight end wise, we know we need tight end help. I am 100% on the, the double dip at tight end. Whether it be by way of draft or by way of free agency. I would go after... Schultz, Dalton Schultz, the tight end from the Cowboys. I think you go after him. If you can't land him, maybe you go after someone like Najoko, Najoku or OJ Howard. Um, and then you go into the draft, and I think you got to take Trey McBride with that 35th pick. I think that's where I'd be looking. If you want to go Ruckert in the third or fourth round, I'm okay with that. Whichever one they like. There's like, what, five tight ends going to Senior Bowl? We'll go through all. We'll, I'll, do, I'll do a breakdown video. For you guys at some point, I'll give you my thoughts on all of them. So many different ways you could go with tight end. Cornerback's going to be an issue. If I have to see one more mock draft with friggin' Derek Stingley Jr. going number four, I'm going to lose my mind. And Ali, this is to you, loyal NY Jet fans. <laughs> Ali, I know you want a corner. I talked to you on, on Richie's stream. He's all about getting a corner. Maybe he doesn't want a corner at four. That's possible. I don't want a corner at four. I don't want a corner at 10. I don't, I'll be honest, I don't really want a cornerback in the top four picks that we have. As weird as that sounds, I don't love it. If I were to trade back, I'd want picks for next year. Here's another thing we haven't talked about, and we can definitely talk about this a little bit. Would you be willing to trade back up into the first? Because the Jets have two picks that are very close to the top of that second round, there's a lot of things you can do. Now, if you're taking the trade value chart to heart and you're you're saying, hey, this is the value you can get and this is how far you can get up, if you were to give both second round picks, you'd get up to about pick 15. If you were to give up 35 and our third, you would get up to about pick 21. If you were to give up pick 38 and our third, it would get you up to about pick 23 or 24. Um I would not want to give up both second round picks. Um, I would totally give up one of the seconds and a third though, to, to move up for a guy that's falling. And I don't know who that is. Who provides enough value that you need a fifth year option? I don't know. Jerome agrees with me about Stingley. Yep. Don't want Stingley. Adam S. says, free agent corner. Free agent corner is an interesting one. I put Carlton Davis down. I, I want J.C. Jackson. <laughs> Let's make that very clear. I very much want J.C. Jackson. Um, he's going to cost probably 20 $21 million a year. Although I would think he's going to get franchised. I'd be shocked if he was not franchise tagged. Uh, there is a, a thought that Davis gets franchise tagged. I'm not going to lose a whole lot of sleep over it. I don't think our, our cornerback situation is as bad as I thought it was going to be heading into the season. Patrick Husk says sauce Gardner. Love me some sauce Gardner. I think he's the best, cor best corner in this draft. Um, I would not draft him where he's gonna need to be drafted. I think we have a lot of other, a lot of other issues. Um, See, Stefan Gilmore says, NY Jets fan four. I wouldn't hate that move. 
Um, I'm fine with a veteran corner if you want to let Eccles kind of learn a little bit from him. Um, I am a little leery on giving like a monster contract. I think I gave Carlton Davis three years, 45 in my mock. Not sure if that's correct. Um, I would say I, I would be nervous <laughs> handing out a cornerback contract after seeing what happened with uh, Tremaine Johnson. RJ McPott drops in the super chat says, is this draft the best non quarterback draft in years? The best non quarterback draft. Let's see. Last year's was a deep quarterback draft. What was the year before that? Was that the Kyler draft? 20, yeah, last year was 2021. 2020 was Beckton. So that was what Tua Herbert year before that would have been Kyler at one. I would think so. I mean, this has got to be a pretty top heavy draft. This is probably one of the weaker quarterback classes. I don't know if you say it's as weak as maybe the Kyler draft um, with the exception of Kyler. Um, or if you go back as far as, what is that, 2013 with Geno Smith? That was a bad draft. Hopefully it's not that bad. Um, but this is a good draft for, for not needing a quarterback. See, guys, this is why I said you need to trade Sam Darnold last year. Could you imagine if we kept Sam, found out he stunk this year, and now needed a quarterback? <laughs> what do you do? Are you going after Russell Wilson? Maybe. You're not going after Watson? I wouldn't like that. Not anymore. Aaron Rodgers? He's not coming here. Man. That could have been bad. That could have been real bad. This is a very good time to have a non-quarterback need in the draft, especially with two top 10 picks. I saw NY Sports MC. He was in the chat at one point. Maybe he's not here anymore. Um, said Hamilton is a must at four. I wouldn't hate that. It's not not really the direction I want to go. But if you can convince me that Kyle Hamilton's a generational safety, he's going to be the next Ed Reed, and you want to take Nakobe Dean at 10, oh, man, did this defense get a whole heck of a lot better. Whole heck of a lot better. I think I wouldn't do that purely because I think you are going to shoot yourself in the foot so bad with Makai Becton. It sucks. It, oh, Dude, it really That 2020 draft is beyond infuriating because I shouldn't have to be looking for a wide receiver. I shouldn't have to be looking for another tackle. That just drives me Looney Tunes. For me, when I look at that 2020 draft class, I think that Joe Douglas had a hunch because he had already been through one football season with Gase. I think he gets to the draft, and I think he decided... He was going to get some scheme guys for Gase, of course. P. Ryan Morgan. I think he decided with his high picks, he was going to go high upside, extremely athletic, guys with high RAS scores. What was that? Relative athletic score? Is that right? RAS? Makai Becton, one of the best RAS scores. Denzel Mims, one of the best RAS scores. Jabari Zuniga, one of the best RAS scores. Ashton Davis did not compete because he did not go to the combine because he was injured. But I would imagine his metrics probably would have been at the top of those RAS scores as well. So I do like, as much as people hate on Joe Douglas for his 2020 draft, right now he has an F for the 2020 and an A plus for the 2021 without Gase. I err on the side of him being an elite talent evaluator. I think he saw talent in Becton and Mims. But I think because of everything going on with the limited interviews, everything going on, uh, except remember, 2020 draft was the very beginning, very, very beginning of this world that we now live in with limited interviews. You guys can obviously uh, use your context clues to figure out what I'm talking about. But either way, they were not able to meet as much with these prospects as you might have been able to in other years. Now, we weren't supposed to meet with any of them last year, right? Like very few. <laughs> And it wound up working out all right. So I don't know. But I would say 100% of the drafts that Adam Gase and Joe Douglas were together were flops. 100% of the drafts that Joe Douglas was not with Adam Gase, A+. Plus. I think Joe Douglas is going to have another home run draft. There's just so many ways that he can go about doing it. 
so many ways. Uh, what are you guys talking about in the chat? Steve Rose says, we cannot say A-plus for 2021 until we know what Wilson is. That's fair. If you want to call this entire draft, you know, to be determined for three years, no problem. But if we're grading the 2020 draft after like a year and a half, two years now, I think we can we can at least look a little bit ahead to this draft. I'm excited. Look, Wilson showed me enough to think that he can get better next year. Quarterback, you almost have to take out of it. I would, I would pull the quarterback out of the conversation. It's not like we traded up for him. We kind of used our own draft pick. And then you also have to see, like, okay, how does Fields, how does Lance play? Mac Jones, I don't think anyone, if you were to go back in time, say, hey, you're taking Mac Jones at two. I don't even think that's a good move. <laughs> like, I think he's very limited. Uh, I would say you remove the quarterback from the conversation. ABT, Michael Carter, Michael Carter, Eccles, Elijah Moore. Five guys. Five. <laughs> that's an A-plus draft. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Forget about what happens to, to Zach Wilson. If you hit on half your draft picks, you are an above-average GM. And five. I just gave you five. <laughs> Not including Zach Wilson. They're all really good. What do we have? Eight draft picks last year? Maybe we had nine. I don't know. We shall see. All right, we got 260 people in here across all platforms. Boys and girls, drop a like on this video if you're just coming in. Helps the algorithm. Helps the channel grow. Could not be here without you uh, lovely people in the chat. Um, and we're going to open the floor. I want to talk to you guys about the NFL draft. I want to talk to you about the Senior Bowl. And I want to talk to you about everything going on in Jetland. Free agency, draft, everything. You let me know what you want to talk about. Phone number is on the screen. Uh, I look forward to talking with you guys. Uh, let's see, NY Sports MC. Ryan, what do you think of Tyler Algerier running back from BYU? He could be a nice compliment to Carter and knows Wilson. Um, I'll be honest. I have not watched him. I have not remotely looked at running back. I shouldn't say remotely. I've looked like the late, late rounds of stuff. Call from... To accept, press 1. Welcome to the cockpit. My name's Ryan. Can you hear me, caller? Of course I can hear you. What's up, my man? Not much, not much. I am hanging in there. I'm trying to... Uh, trying to get everyone's ideas on how they would approach their offseason. So talk to me. All right, so how would you rebuild me, the Jets? Let me give you something that I feel like we have to do. Okay. And I I know you brought it up a lot. And Calvin Ridley, that's Oof. someone that I feel like is a must for us this offseason. You've seen, we've seen this with Josh Allen and Kyler Murray. They got Stephon Diggs and DeAndre Hopkins and took massive steps in their um, rebuild. And I feel like Ridley could do the same for us. And I just don't, after Jameis Williams went down, I just don't think that I want to draft any of the other receivers in the first round. That's just my thoughts though. No, you, Hey, we're on the same wavelength. I, Jamison Williams was hands down my number one wide receiver and it was by like a pretty wide margin. Um, I like Burks and I like London. I don't know where they wind up shaking out. Um, but they make me a little nervous. And again, I said, you know, the the rookie wide receiver is, is still something that's a little, I don't love. Like if you wanted to say, hey, let's not go receiver at 10 and let's take one in the second round, I'd be okay. If you want to go Trey Burks and Doxon uh, from Penn State there, no complaints. But I'm there with you. If you can get Calvin Ridley, for me, when I'm looking at the Ridley situation, it it kind of gets me to think of, okay, where would he want to play? Because I, I that's that's, I think, the big question. I think if Philly wants him, they can go get him. They have the three first round picks. He would be playing again with Hertz and Devonta Smith, two former teammates. I think that's definitely an area that you could look to see him go. Um, but again, it depends on, on how aggressive the Eagles want to be. They have a, a relatively good wide receiver core. I like Donovan Peoples Jones. I like Devonta Smith. I don't like Rieger. Um, but yeah, dude, I couldn't agree more. I think Calvin Ridley's a home run. If you can get him, you got it. I mean, with Philly, it's a little weird because after after the season, I thought, okay, Jalen Hurts could be that guy in Philly. But after watching mm -hmm. the playoff game, 
that offense stung until garbage time. So now I don't know what Billy's plans to be. I don't know if they're going to be using those picks to trade for a quarterback. So they mm-hmm. may not even have any first round picks or maybe just one first round pick. Mm-hmm. We have to see what they're going to do. We'll see if they'll go see if they want to build around Hertz or if they want to just go all in. Let's get Deshaun Watson. If it, if he checks mm-hmm. out, let's go get Russell Wilson. I feel like that could be a thing for that. You have to give up at the very least two first round picks, but we have to I see. Think, I I think that thing Calvin Ridley makes sense for the Eagles. I feel like they mm-hmm. are probably the highest. And if I would say odds, I would say they would be the highest just because of connections and draft the capital. But if we if the Jets really want him, I believe they can acquire him. It's just a matter of how bad Joe Douglas wants him. Yeah, I. Uh, it's it's fascinating to me to see what they could do because the Eagles, if they don't believe in Hurts. They have three first round picks to go get Watson. And then like, what does Watson do? Cause he's been in constant contact with Brian Flores. And I know there's yep. rumors of him going to the giants and the giants giving up the two firsts to go get Deshaun Sean Watson. Um, I have no idea. I think for me, I think the best route for Watson in the NFL is for Flores to go to Houston, because if Watson goes to any other fan base, it's going to completely fracture that fan base. Because you're going to have guys that are excited for the talent. You're going to have guys that will never watch another game because of of what he is and what he sort of, uh, I don't want to say stands for, but kind of embodies maybe with with all these allegations going on. Um, I think the safest route for the NFL is for Flores in Houston and just kind of sort of try to fix that fan base. What, what else yeah, do you think? What else do you think this uh, offseason holds for us? So I actually made a little bit of like an, a mock obviously myself. And mm-hmm. I – when I watched your mock season video and I saw you say Lake and Thomas was like, boom, that's someone I want. Severely underrated guard. I feel like him, if we get him and Dalton Schultz, that would be like, and that would not complete our office. We still need that wide receiver, but Dalton Schultz, great blocker. He had a great, he was, I think he was the leading receiver in the playoff game yesterday. Um, yesterday. Yeah. He's phenomenal. He's got to be tight. He's got to be option one in free agency. I don't think there's mm-hmm. any way you go any other route. You go straight to him like and you say, like, "Hey, twelve million a year, take it." <laughs> I feel like I feel like Dalton Schultz could be like a guarantee of our Joe Tooney, maybe. Like I, I felt I was guaranteed that we could get Joe Tooney last offseason. Obviously, it didn't happen, but yep. I really feel so confident about Dalton Schultz coming here. I just like I would gladly pay him twelve million dollars a year to get to come here. The nice thing is, like, this is an offense that he will shine as a number one receiver in. Um, I don't know if you could say that with other teams that he may wind up going for. But brother, thank you so much for the call. You out of here from the cockpit. <sighs> Gotta love that bird. Numbers on the screen, boys. We'll talk about whatever you want. How would you rebuild the New York Jets? If you're just coming in, drop a like on this video tomorrow. For all you guys hanging out in here, tomorrow we're doing the uh, the talk and Jets panel. Myself, O'Leary, and Greenby, and we got special guest Jake Asman coming on tomorrow. Really looking forward to it. Trying to make a thumbnail, but realizing uh, I'm missing some stuff I need for the thumbnail. So <laughs> that hopefully will be out in the next day or so. But yeah, we're excited. We're going to have uh, have Jake on here. I was on Jake's channel two days ago. We were talking like Jets Rebuild, and I was like kind of word vomiting <laughs> all, the, all the thoughts that I'm having. Um, yeah, whatever. Call from Vinny. Vinny, what's up, brother? Welcome to the car. What's up? What's on your mind, dude? How would you rebuild the New York Jets? Oh, that's a difficult. That's a very difficult question to ask. It's the question that's going on tonight. (laughs) Let's go. Where where are you going? Well, first of all, I just want to point out how important this all is because you look at look at the state of this division. We're not challenging Buffalo, but you look at how terrible New England is. Miami firing Brian Flores, you get this offseason right, you can leapfrog those two teams to second place. Yeah, look, this I would I would I would say this is easily the most important and best set up offseason for the New York Jets in our history since I've been a fan. I've been a fan since like the mid nineties, um, thirty two years old. So I've seen years where we've had top draft picks but no money. I've seen years where we've had a lot of money, but no draft picks because we traded them away for, for various players or various um, trade ups or, you know, whatever's going on this year. We have the money. We have the coaching staff. We have the quarterback already. 
uh, or at least we hope so. Um, you have the draft picks and you have the senior bowl. This senior bowl is so important. Like I cannot tell you how excited I am for this because this is where you round out the depth pieces. This is where you find fourth, fifth, and sixth round guys. But now the Jets have picks. We have two in the first, two in the second, one in the third, two in the fourth, and two in the fifth. So I could definitely see us moving down from, say, the third or the fourth round to pick up a few uh, late round picks throughout the draft so we could pick up some of these guys that we were able to test out for an entire mm -hmm. week. And I would love to see it. Yeah. Well, I think the, obviously I think the top priority, I think the top priority is obviously getting um, that elite um, wide receiver. Yeah. Where do you want to, how do you want to address wide receiver? What direction do you want to go? Well, I, that, I'm big. I'm a big uh, Cal, Calvin Ridley guy right now. <laughs> I, I feel like all Jet fans are. I'm like, dude. I'm like, so I love Calvin. Well, like, you I look, really, I hope he's good. Is, to like go. I said, it, it's not going to cost you the same that it costs like to get a guy like Diggs. Mm -hmm. Nowhere near. I think it's definitely. I think it could cost. God, I think it. I think it definitely costs you a second, at the yeah, very least. And I could see a team like Philly, who has three firsts okay with giving up their latest first i think they have 14 15 19 or 15 16 19 or something like that mm -hmm. um i could i could definitely see it happen yep no i just wanted to not yeah no i agree but like that's the thing secondly is upgrade tight end then you know get ed and you get some help on get it an edge to compliment lawson get help at linebacker you know and then i think after that um you know, plug up some leaky holes on the offensive line. I think if you can do all that, you can put this team in pretty good shape. Yeah, I think you have to bring in some type of guard. I'm hoping LDT gets the extension because I'd love to re-sign him and then just move into the draft thinking about possibly taking a guard. I don't want to have to sign one in free agency. I know I had us taking Tomlinson, uh, the guard from the 49ers in my mock, but that's like I don't want to have to do that. <laughs> I would be very upset. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. are there any other positions you have identified? Like, are you dead set on edge at the top of this draft? Would you be open to taking an edge in free agency? Uh, maybe something I haven't thought of. No, I think I think I'm in, think I'm hoping edge in the top of the draft. I'm really mm -hmm. looking at. But I know people. I know probably to you know, the top two are probably going to be gone at that point. So mm -hmm. maybe you know, maybe you trade back a little and get stock up some more draft picks and take the third car, guy Carl off this a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really, I get the feeling that a quarterback will rise to the point where either we can trade out or they'll get taken just before us and we will get one of the top three players in this draft. Um, I agree. I do think one of the two edge rushers will wind up being there at four. That's my my gut feeling. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Hopefully it goes that way. I would love Thibodeau. Thibodeau is the one. I, don't get me wrong. I would love Hutchinson. Or Thibodeau. I think Hutchinson has a safer floor. Thibodeau has a has an astronomical ceiling um, mm -hmm. with a lower floor. But, man, Thibodeau seems like the harder type of edge rusher to try and find. Like the, the guy, the bendy type of guy. He mm -hmm. definitely compares similarly, at least on a bend-wise, to Lawson, where Carl Loftus is definitely more of like a, an edge kind of setting bull rush edge. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Vinny, thank you so much for calling. Vincent, you're out of here! From the cockpit. Let's see. Deuce Dose. Saying OBJ. Are you saying OBJ in free agency or are you saying OBJ because the game's on right now? Is the game on right now? I guess it is. Probably 8 30. See, can't be messing around with D end and O line. Like I mentioned, Lawson won't be back to 100% next year. Says Gohan angered. That's my biggest fear. We're gonna see the exact same kind of defense if we don't get another edge rusher. Like if Carl Lawson is not what uh, what he was, I, th I think you hope for 100% recovery, but you bet on not having that. Same thing with Becton. Call from. Afrom. Afrom, what's up, brother? Welcome to the cockpit. 
Welcome. First time in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to have you on, brother. How would you fix yeah. the New York Jets? Well, uh, the Beckton situation really screws us up because really you're concerned about uh, his health, his ability to even play left tackle the way he was beat um, mm -hmm. with uh, in, in, in preseason, let alone. So you'd, you'd really need to go most likely have to kneel on the fourth pick. Mm -hmm. Now, you can also, I was thinking about this. Um, do you do you make a deal with, you want Ridley as well, right? You, you've been talking mm -hmm. about getting Ridley. Mm -hmm. Do you swap the fourth with the eighth with Atlanta, since they do need a, a, a lineman as well, and throw in another pick, whatever. This way, in the eighth pick, you could probably get um, Cross, mm -hmm. uh, and then you can, with the tenth pick, you might be able to get either uh, uh, Wilson or or Burke. So, uh, would you are you could, saying the Falcons would come up for a quarterback, or they're coming up for a lineman at four? A lineman, a lineman. I don't think I, there's any quarterback in this this position. I to, think uh, I think I would have a hard time justifying them coming up from eight to four um, because like you mentioned, the Jets might want to take an offensive lineman at eight. So like, why wouldn't, why wouldn't the Eagles take one at eight? Um, but I do think in the event they're looking to come up for a quarterback, because I think that's probably the only way they're looking to move up. Um, I would definitely trade they, down. I would, I, they, the value yeah, from I four to eight is a mid second round pick. So maybe you throw in like, oh. Do you do Denzel Mims the trade down and yeah. call it a day, or is or do you have to throw in more for Ridley? Like if someone's offering a first round pick to get Ridley, then maybe they they wouldn't do that move. I, I don't know, right. but I would think that if they want the quarterback and they can leapfrog a division rival in the Panthers, and you know, I'm going to pretend that the Giants want a quarterback. I don't think they do, but <laughs> I think I'm going to pretend yeah. it as best I can. Uh, but you got to hope one of these quarterbacks starts getting the mm -hmm. the notoriety. Well, so get this. The best thing about the senior, best thing about the Senior Bowl is a lot of these quarterbacks, Malik Willis, um, Pickett, and who's the other one? Is it Corral? I think all three of them are going to the Corral, Senior Bowl, which Corral. means they can be run through the Jets' offense, which is one of the most prolific types of offenses in the NFL. McVay, uh, Lafleur, Shanahan, like that whole coaching tree teaches this type of offense. So having that player perform well in our offense is going to look good. So we want to fluff these numbers up. This is, this is the, uh, the fluffing Absolutely. before the draft. Yeah. And you hope that someone really has, uh, 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 really wants that player. Uh, they believe in it. You know, um, it's a tough one because really this, this quarterbacking, um, mm. group has not gotten really the, any, uh, takers, you know, no one's talking. You know, like they did last year with with uh, mm -hmm. with uh, the, with Wilson. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, this is a totally different Lance, class. I mean, yeah, you're we, right. we were looking so at like... quarterbacks last year. You knew Trey Lance and Fields and Lawrence going into the season last year were a lock yeah. to be talked about as top flight quarterbacks. Yeah. And then Wilson pops out of nowhere, and then Mac Jones, you know, has his big year. Um, right. But you knew after the season which quarterbacks were going to be pretty highly talked about. And I don't get the same vibe right now. No. So that's why the Senior Bowl and the Combine are going to be huge. We need one of these guys to rise for sure. Yeah. Free agency, I really think they should go after Schultz uh, mm -hmm. for tight end. And I still would draft uh, McBride in the second round. Yeah, same here. Uh, I would take McBride have, have seems a nice, like the have a nice duo. Pick. Yeah, I, for me, if I could peg one player, one player, <laughs> I would I would go so far as to say I would give up a second and our third to move back up into the first to get McBride if we think he's not going to be there. Like I, he feels like to me. I mean, I guess you don't. I don't know if you have Schultz. You, there's not as much of a need to do that. But like, if you don't have your tight end and you have to go get him, I have no problem trading up for McBride if I have to. But I mean, the other guy, uh, Wiedemeyer, I think it is Wiedemeyer. There's a uh, wider or whatever the guy from uh, yeah. A&M, I think. There's yeah. a few tight ends. There, there's enough where you wouldn't have to trade up, but I like McBride a lot. Right. <laughs> so I would be, yeah. I'd be okay. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. But I mean, yeah, you, you know, is it a big? Is it that much? Of a big... <laughs> oh, listen, you're out of here. That was a great call. 
I apologize for cutting you off early, <laughs> but that, that was a good call. You've been ejected by the cockpit. Oh, God. Love the chicken. Uh, let's see. Let me get some. I see you guys calling. I'm going to throw up some super chats real quick because I saw those come through. Uh, where's the other one? There it is. Uh, RJ McPot drops in with super chat says Phillies three firsts for number four. You do it. And what's the picks? Yes, <laughs> I would. Absolutely. If they're giving me three first round picks. I'm trading down. You can take four. I don't care. I'll take three edge rushers. I'll get one of them to stick. No, I, they would never do that, but yes, I would do that. And who would I take if they got, it's like late, it's like 14, 15, 19 or 15, 16, 19. Um, oh God, it feels like there's almost like a no man's land. I feel like there's gotta be a cornerback in there, a linebacker and a receiver in some capacity, but I'm not going to put too much mental energy into that. But thank you, RJ. Uh, V-Man. Oh, where'd it go? By the way, I'm surprised you didn't notice my bass playing. I did notice. I just wanted to talk to you about the Jets. I didn't want to hear you play music. <laughs> I love you, Vinny. Come on, brother. Zachary says, "You think? do you think Vic Fangio comes over to be defensive coordinator? No, I do not think he does. I don't think Ulbrick goes anywhere. Um, and that's not to say that I wouldn't love an upgrade from, from Ulbrick, but I think it's bad juju to fire a guy after not devoting the resources needed to give him a, a starting caliber defense. I mean, you, you figure you lost Carl Lawson, Vinnie Curry, Ronald Blair, LaMarcus Joyner. Those are the guys we brought in to facilitate the 4-3 to 3-4 defense. Uh, uh, 3-4, 2-4-3 defense. Um, and then we've traded away Leonard Williams and Jamal Adams. Both good moves, but you know, you're know you losing a lot of, of ammo on the defensive side. Um, so I would not move on from, from Ulbrich because I do think there's probably uh, some bad juju if you wind up doing that. Um, Mumtaz, where'd you go? Bam. Mumtaz drops in with a super chat and says, I am hundred percent sure we trade down one of the two first round picks and also one in the fourth and fifth. This draft is not, this draft will not end with us picking in sixth many times. We will not, this draft will not end with us picking in sixth many times. Uh, well, we don't have any in the sixth. I'm a little confused by that, but okay. Um, I do think there's a real good shot we trade down from one of four or ten. I think it's a really good shot we move down from four. That That is 100% the move I'd make. If you have to trade down with the Falcons to get Ridley, uh, trade down with Washington to pick up their first next year, do you go to the Saints and drop down real far, uh, let them get their quarterback? Maybe you can pick up someone like a Marshawn Lattimore in that trade. They're $56 million over the salary cap. Perhaps you can allow them to get under the salary cap by doing a little wheeling and dealing. Now, you'd have to do that earlier because I think they have to be under the salary cap by day one of the new league year. So that's a little a little confusing. Um, but we shall see. Uh, and I could see us moving down in the fourth or the fifth. Ah, good friend of the channel, Mr. Bucks Nation. What's up, brother? Congratulations to your Bucks. Uh, he says, hey, man, showing some love. Keep up the great work. If you guys want a good Bucks channel, that's a good one. Um, always fun. Always fun, brother. All right, guys. Let me get back to the phone calls. Phone number is on the screen. Let me just pull up the Google Voice. Oh, can't do that. Got a super chat. <laughs> Thomas Cahill, brother, thank you so much for the super chat. He says, Ryan, the sweet spot is between 8 and 20. We can acquire three or four picks by trading down guys like Kennard, Leal, Booth, etc. By the way, your mock was right on. Uh, there's a few ways I want to go about my mock. I'm not going to lie. There's part of me, and I, I sent this to Matt and Greenbean afterwards. I was like, yo, if we could go after, like, like let's say you take Karloftis at four. Or, actually, you know what? No, I'd probably go and kneel at four. Nakobe Dean at 10. We need an edge. If you go Carl Loftus, Carl Loftus or Neil, one of those two <laughs> at four. Then you go Neil at 10, McBride at 35, Doxon at uh, 38, the receiver from Penn State. And then you go like Alec Lindstrom, the center from Boston College in the third, because I found out Jarrett Patterson is returning to school. So unfortunately, my mock was out of date two days 
before I even put it out. Blast. Um, but yeah, trading down. So between 8 and 20 is the sweet spot you're saying. So let, let me just pull this up real quick. I'm just curious where Tankathon, uh, who's down there. So between 8 and 20. So Pittsburgh, Philly, New Orleans would be 18 if you want to drop back that far. Uh, that's probably the farthest they would go down. Maybe Minnesota wants to trade up if they're totally done with Cousins. Um, I feel like Washington jumping in front of the Giants or Atlanta jumping in front of Carolina. Those are the two moves that I can see made for sure. Um, but I'm definitely, I'm a seller, 100%. Um, let's see, Mr. Downtown. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, he says, O-line, defensive end, tight end, wide receiver, early in this draft, cornerback should be in free agency. Uh, yeah, look, I don't mind that. If, it, if they don't want to go cornerback at all this year, uh, or I shouldn't say at all, but like without their top picks, I'm okay with that. I saw enough from Eccles and Hall and Carter um, to be okay losing some games by way of corner. Like I think I think they will play better and the rest of the defense will play better with like safety help and edge rusher help. Um, we do need, we, like, we need a corner. <laughs> So there's no two ways around it, but I do think it's it's not as pressing need. It's not one I want in the top four round, uh, top two rounds for sure. Uh, so you say O line, tenant, tight end, wide receiver. Well, that would be it, right? Like if we go, I mean, it's not linebacker. I dude, I really want to find a reason to draft Nakobe Dean. <laughs> there's like one player that I fall in love with each year, and Nakobe Dean is is that for me. I really really like Nakobe Dean. Um, but yeah, offensive lineman. I feel like Neil at four if he's there. Or icky, God, it's it. That sucks having to wait such a high pick on <laughs> an offensive lineman. I really didn't want to do it, but dude, I think you're, I think you're spot on. I think I would, I would go that route. Um, all right, phone number is on the screen, boys and girls. Pull up the Google Voice. Some of your thoughts. Do this. We could do. Let's do another two calls. Do another two phone calls here. Only doing the hour show because we got football tonight. We got football tonight. Ryan's got to go down watching football. Call from Joe. Joe, what's up, brother? Welcome to the cockpit. Hey, Ryan, how you doing? Not too bad. How you doing, brother? How was your holidays? Not bad, man. I had hernia surgery. Oh, geez, <laughs> that's horrible. Monday, Are you doing so... all right? Yeah, you know, I, I work for the NYP, like I told you, so I, I got oh, enough nice. time to take off. Oh, there you go. That's awesome. Well, talk to me. How would you like to rebuild the Jets? Well, here we go. I want to make a bold prediction. Okay. The Jets might trade the number four mm -hmm. to Philadelphia for the number 15 and 16 pick. Okay. Then they're going to get the third round pick as well. And next year, the second pick and throw Denzel Mims in there. That That's a wild trip. <laughs> so you're saying we get we get their <laughs> four we get four or fifteen sixteen whatever those two picks are the back to back ones. Yep. You're saying we get another pick this year, and one next the, year. The three. We got their three next yes. year or this year? You mean? And no, the two next year. year. Yep. And Denzel Mims thrown in. I would love that. <laughs> I would do that in a heartbeat. I don't think it's going to happen, but I would love it. Have the I mean I guess that's a connection right with uh, Joe Douglas and Philly. Maybe they have some wheeling and dealing if they don't love Hertz and they want to come up. I feel like there might be a little bad blood if you move on from Hertz. Um especially since you have Devonta Smith. When you have guys that played together in college, I think they're probably mm -hmm. get their, they probably get their nose out of whack. Um I I don't want to trade down that far, but you you could get me to bite on two first for sure. Yeah, I mean, think about our needs, right? Mm -hmm. And next year we had on another second round pick. I mean, it's a little, like you said, down. I personally don't want, don't like that. But I don't know, Ryan, the way the Jets are, because you look at Makai Becton, like I told you, mm -hmm. I think he's a great talent, but I think he's a waste of talent. I don't think he's going to pan out for us. I think he is lazy. I don't think he loves the game. Mm hmm. And it's a shame because the kid could be like Tristan Wirfs. He has that kind of ability, that kind of talent. Mm -hmm. Maybe even yeah. be better. I, I think we can see that 
Becton's ceiling is best tackle in the league. I, th I think that's fair to say based on yeah. his side, his explosiveness, everything like that. I think he could be the best in the league. It's does he want to be? And I think that's the real concern with him and Mims. Like, I think well, yeah, Woody, it just Danny feels like Woody Mims questions. doesn't want it. Uh, you know, I hate to say it. I don't know if the Jets handled Denzel Mims right, though. That kid has a lot of ability. He reminded me of Brandon mm -hmm. Marshall a little bit. When he was stiff arming people, he's, you know, big. I, I just I think love, the Jets, I love he's just going to work out for him. <laughs> I love me some Brandon oh, Marshall. Yeah. Brandon Marshall, I feel like. I mean, maybe I'm misremembering, but I don't think you could ever complain about his work ethic. That guy was just like 100 miles an hour all the time. He's um, like a borderline Hall of Famer. <laughs> I, I, if if he had a ring, he'd probably be able to make it in. I don't think he will. Um, yeah, I, also, I don't know what his stats were in some of his bit. other years. He was traded for two second round picks, and then he got traded to the Bears for a little bit. He was all over the league. Yeah. Well, anyway, Ryan, that's what I would do with the fourth round pick if I could get the 15, 16, and the third. Round mm -hmm. pick and next year get a number two and throw Denzel Mims in. But honestly, well, let me tell you exactly. Hold on, I got I got to tell you what the value is, and because the two so that Philly has fifteen, sixteen, and nineteen. Um, point wise, uh, fifteen and sixteen together is twenty one hundred and fifty. The Jets pick is eighteen hundred. So maybe you have an outside shot at like sixteen and nineteen, which would be eighteen seventy five mm -hmm. compared to our eighteen hundred. Um, and again, it's not it's not an exact science because this chart goes out the window when you're going up for a quarterback. But I would be surprised if Philly did not make all three first round picks. I think that team was in like was so devoid of cap space last year that they just need so much help yeah. this year. So I, I would I be think, surprised I if they trade. For, right, I think for the number four, we should get my opinion, Evan mm -hmm. Neal, mm -hmm. and number ten, I like Nicobe Dean. I think you're right on him. I dude, I just or, think or he adds a spice. If if you can get N'Kobe Dean at ten, you let him learn with C.J. Mosley for a year, and then you just unleash him yeah. as the team captain in twenty twenty three. Like I, I really I think he's special. I think he is. I don't know if he's Micah Parsons, but he is he is a scary athlete that will hold people accountable, mm -hmm. and he's explosive. He's a violent player. Hey Ryan, do you think Thibodeau is overrated? <clears throat> um, I don't know. It's it's weird to say. I, I think he's been looked at as the number one pick for so long, but I think he could be there at four. I really do. I don't think he's going to be the first one off the board. All right. Well, thank you, Ryan. Have a good night, brother. You too, bro. You You're out of here. From the cockpit. All right. Let's do one more phone call. Let's get another phone call in here. I want to hear some 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 other guys in here. Give me some thoughts on how you would like to rebuild the Jets. Make sure you hit the like button on the way in or out, however you want to do it. Uh, helps the algorithm. Helps the channel grow. Just crossed the 18,000 subscriber threshold. Kind of nice. I'd love to get to uh, 20. 20 would be 20 is an awesome milestone. Would lose my mind if we could get to that. Call from Alex Rothson. Alex, what's up, brother? Welcome to the cockpit. What is up, my man? Thank you for allowing me to join. Oh, I'm so glad you. I'm so glad to have you on. How would you rebuild the New York Jets? Man, where to begin with that question? Um, with the New <laughs> I know, York it's like a loaded Jets, question, right? <laughs> um, I know, right? That's been a question for the past 11 years. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the offseason primarily should be focused on getting a lot of players um, for Zach Wilson's growth. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely think they should really try and pursue Calvin Ridley. That's a big playmaker that really fits into Zach Wilson's talents with the big arm and Calvin Ridley's speed. Yep. Definitely think throw the bag at Dalton Schultz. Basically, just hand a blank check and just write whatever you want to on there, my man. And you you have it. I mean, that'd yep. be perfect. Love it. <laughs> and then also, I think they also address a little bit of the offensive line issue because I'll get into the draft here in a second. But I just don't sure. think Evan Neal's going to be there at four. I think the Texans are going to take him at three. Okay. But uh, I think I think I there's a real high likelihood that he them. goes either one or three. I think there there definitely is a high likelihood. Oh yeah, for sure, definitely because I mean. Aside from Penny Sewell, I think it's mm -hmm. going to be between him and Evan Neal for being probably the most sure prospect at the tackle position I've ever seen. Like, they're both now, just so. When you say offensive line in free agency, are, are, is, do you have a player in mind? Um, that's where it kind of gets tougher. I don't really know the market, but all mm -hmm. I know is I would really like to have a new right guard. Um, because I'm fine mm -hmm. with every other position. Um. Mm -hmm. Makai Becton, I'm willing to give him one more year just to prove himself, but if he gets hurt again, it's 
becoming an issue at this point. Like, I love the pick, but clearly mm-hmm. hasn't been working out. He's got to get it in shape. I'm and then, on the um, so side good. of, like, I, I think you have to – bet against Becton this year so you don't screw over Wilson with a rookie tackle next year, like in 2023. I think you almost have to pull yeah. the trigger now. <laughs> like, which, it's, oh, it sucks. It's, like, not what I want to do. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure, because, I mean, like you said earlier, Makai Becton has the potential to be the best in the league, but does he want it? And I haven't really mm-hmm. seen that yet. Yeah. But moving into the draft, just mm-hmm. the biggest issue with me with the Jets this year is Carl Lawson. Loved yep. the signing. Absolutely thought he was going to be amazing. And then he took, ruptures the Achilles. Mm-hmm. I just feel like at four, if Thibodeau is there, like you said, I will do backflips. I mean, for real. Like, it may be like 15 in a row at two. Like, because Thibodeau is amazing, in my opinion. Now, you're going to be but watching the draft he, stream, correct? Oh, yeah, for sure, my man. I wouldn't miss There we go. <laughs> me, O'Leary, uh, and Bean. Oh, dude, I love doing the draft stream. Oh, yeah. But then I would definitely – if it's there, I would definitely go George Karloftis at four. I like okay. his potential. Now the difference sure. between him and Hutchinson and Thibodeau. Yeah, it feels like there's definitely a step rusher. down. I mean, that's night and day. Yeah. But but still, I like him a lot. And then at 10, my man, I love N'Kobe Dean too. Um, I also hate him because <laughs> I'm a Florida Gators fan and he's oh. just destroyed us the past couple of years. Would you take but, Dean um, at, at 10 or are you looking somewhere else? Again, that depends if the Jets get Ridley. If they get That's Calvin true. Ridley, then I may pull the trigger on the Kobe Dean because I think his draft stock's going to rise like crazy during the offseason. Yep. But uh, if, he, if we don't get Calvin Ridley, just the receiver, we need another receiver. And I think Traylon Burks fits what this team needs. You guys Dude, he looks Brandon like Debo Marshall. Samuel. That's my biggest comp. Six foot three. I think he's like 230 or 220. He's, he's big yeah, he's, and fast. He's superhuman. Superhuman built. And. He fits again Zach Wilson perfectly because Traylon mm-hmm. Burks has speed, but he also can go up and get that football. Like that's the biggest well, that's thing. Just and it. That's... You look at the guys that we brought in in free agency last year: Corey Davis, Keelan Cole, two guys that were very good at 50-50 balls. That's something that Joe, uh, Joe Douglas definitely focused on. So someone like Traylon Burks fits the bill with that type of frame, I guess. Um, exactly. I don't know. It's it's fascinating to me to see where all these guys shake out. I've seen Burks ranked as low as like 38 and as high as like 10. So I'm like, I have no clue where this guy's going in the draft. Yeah, because he has all the physical tools, but then again, he was at Arkansas and they haven't done a ton the past few years mm-hmm. until Sam Pittman got there. But it feels still, like the talent to, is undeniable. Yeah, for me, it feels like he was the focal point of that offense and he just did what he wanted. Almost the same way with uh, Drake London. Those are the two guys that I think with Williams out, uh, that I'd be looking at wide receiver wise. Oh yeah, for sure. And then later on in the draft, I still mm-hmm. feel like the Jets need to keep focusing on defense because that was mm-hmm. the biggest vice I felt like throughout the year. Yeah. Not necessarily because some of the players were bad on there. Now, of course, there was a few, mm-hmm. but there is just like that defense is Robert Sala's bread and butter. He needs to get his defense, and that's where I kind of like the Carlos's pick because Boom! You're out he been ejected from the cockpit. So he wants Karloftis, then Nicobe Dean or Traylon Burks, depending on what happens with the wide receiver room. Interesting. Interesting stuff. This is, I, I don't hate it. These are things that I'm I'm echoing here. I very much like the way he was going with that. Uh, I did see a super chat come through. Let me just scroll through and find that. Green Bean, I did see you in here. Love you, brother. I'll see you tomorrow with Jake Asman on the Talking Jets panel. Uh, Johnny P. Johnny P says... Do you think the Jets honored Salah's we will lift you up promise? Uh, no, I don't think we did. Not this year. Um, I would say there are maybe times this year that that could have been seen as true. I would say the Jacksonville game rings a bell. Um, I would say, I would say no, we, we definitely did not live up to that. Uh, statement. I think that the Jets losing Carl Lawson, losing Mackay Becton, just kind of put us behind the eight ball right off the start. Um, I I do think the Jets will live up to that this next year, but I think we will also see Zach Wilson rise up more than we saw this past year because we really didn't see a whole lot. What was his, his highest yardage total? I think it was like 297. Um, and then some of his best games at the end of the year – the Tampa game, the Jacksonville game. Um, 
was it the Saint game? Was Saint game all right? I don't remember if the Saint game was good. Um, I think we will see a better, more confident Zach going into next year uh, for sure. But I, I don't think this year we we lived up to that at all. Um, you know what? Ryan's feeling Ryan's feeling generous. Let's do one more phone call. Let me let me get one more phone call in there. Let's see. Eh, eh. <laughs> trying to pull up Google Voice while I'm doing this at the same time. I switched up my whole setup, so now my like camera's not pointed the way it used to be pointed, and now I gotta move my jet sign at some point to have it in the video. <sighs> Content creator struggles. <laughs> this is what happens when you you put risers on your desk. Whatever. Stupid stuff. Sorry if I'm bothering you guys. Phone number's on the screen. Let's get one more call in here. Uh, what are you guys talking about in the chat? Would you swap 10 and 12 with the Vikings? They give us a third. Oh, and give up a third for Delaney Hunter. Call from... Family man. Hey, what's good, brother? Welcome to the cockpit. Hey, Ryan, what's up, buddy? Thanks for having me on. Dude, glad to have you on. Talk to me. How would you rebuild the New York Jets? Well, if I had to go, uh, I'm going to go with the draft first, okay? So okay. I say at edge, number four, I think he go great freak. I love his get-off. I love his hand usage. And you got to remember, the Jets don't blitz. We don't blitz at all. Mm -hmm. So we need our four to get home. Mm -hmm. So, so, so I don't trust the Lawson is going to be a hundred percent off of an Achilles injury. Mm -hmm. And if he's not, or if he, or if one of those guys get hurt again, then what? We're absolutely screwed if we don't have an edge. Sure. So you're saying Carl um, Loftus at four. Yeah. Okay. And then I would, and as much as I love Nicole Dean, I think we need to actually, like, like we supposed to build up Zach, you know, support him. So I would, I would go Drake London or um, Trayvon Burks. So these are both guys who are 6'3", 6'5". Yep. Both 4'3 guys. Mm -hmm. So, and that's who Zach uh, had, like, a lot of uh, success with. His uh, number one receiver at BYU was, uh, I think, Max Billy. I think I'm mispronouncing his name. But he was a 6'3 guy who got down the field. And, 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 and playing in today's NFL, you got a big target who can go downfield just with a jump ball, you're going to get a pass interference. Like, we don't take advantage of that. We don't, we don't, we, and, and Zach has a hell of an arm, but we have no one to get downfield for us. Yeah, you watched and, Elijah and Moore like perform him. well right. with that. that. He got a few pass interference calls. My buddy and I, big Raider fan, talking about this, how Derek Carr has a ton of yardage that's missing from his statistics because of all the pass interference calls that he draws. That is something that I wish the NFL would track or that stat sites would track. If any of you guys know where you could track that, I would love to know because there are receivers that are really good at getting pass interference calls, and there's quarterbacks that are really good at getting pass interference calls. And I think that's something I would highly focus on as a, as a part that you'd want your quarterback and receiver tandem to be on. And I think getting someone like a Trayvon Burks or a Drake London is just what the doctor ordered. I would have no problem with either of those picks. Even Carl Loftus at four, I have no problem with that. Right. And so we always miss out on the hidden yardage, which is, like you said, pass interference calls. And I love uh, Burks. I think Drake London might be a little bit more fine as far as a route runner, and he's a dog. I mean, you're not taking him down with one, with one guy, you know, uh, and it opens up, you know, uh, uh, it opens up uh, Elijah Moore in the middle so he can kind of do his thing. I think he should always have been a slot. I really see him as a, as, a, as a guy on the outside. I think we're kind of misusing him. So if we got a guy like that, now we maximize our talent with a guy like Berrios um, uh, and Moore who can play a slot, and we, have, and we still have games coming back. We, for some reason, we have a rash of injuries at wide receiver. You know, everyone's hamstring or, or quad is going out on them. So we need that depth. You know, we need solid depth. And uh, I'm almost I'm almost tempted to say, like, we might need two edge rushers maybe later on. Uh, yeah. So Boye Marte out of Minnesota, maybe a third-round guy. Um, I don't, I don't have any problem with double-dipping an edge. I, I think for me, I'd prefer to go, like, an older edge, like a, like a Justin Houston, a Von Miller, uh, someone along those lines that might – kind of provide some veteran leadership along with a high draft pick like a Carl Loftus or like, uh, you know, Jermaine Johnson or something along those lines. Yep. Yeah. But I like Huff too. I mean, Huff, when it, so I mean, he's really, but these guys always get hurt, you know, and coming, you know, coming off. I think Huff had a quad. You got uh Lawson with an Achilles. You can't get a get off when you, when you got a blown out quad or with an Achilles, forget about it. Sure. So that's what I'm saying. That just is, is almost paramount. Now I, now I think linebacker is important. Uh, it's just not as important as, as edge for us right now. 
True. So I like a linebacker. I like Chad Muma at Wyoming. Mm-hmm. So, oh, I like him a lot. I had him going yeah. in the second. And he's, he's going to be in the Senior Bowl. Yeah, and I think I, I think we got a chance to coach him. I think we're going to I think you're going to see a lot of guys from the senior bowl. I'm going to have to have my list of senior bowl guys and just start highlighting the ones that I think are going to happen. I guarantee we get a tight end from the senior bowl. I don't know if it'll okay. be McBride, but I think I, I would love McBride in the second round. I mean if he's if he's still around. Uh but yeah. if not, uh Sam Porter, uh you could probably get him in the fifth round. Mm-hmm. Um uh Charlie Cola, I know Greenbean loves him. I, I think Polar's he's good. Really I don't know good. He doesn't separate much, but he don't he don't drop anything. He don't drop anything. And then you pair him up with a, a guy like Yabo, and if we could bring in a veteran tight end, you know, we might be cooked with grease here. Yeah. Oh no, absolutely. <laughs> I like that. I've never heard that cooking with grease, cooking with fire. There you <laughs> go. No, no, no uh, the, the term. But yeah, no, I, right. I like it. So what would you? Right. It, it, you're saying Chad Muma in the second round with Trey McBride, so and then like a I, I would try to go Chad Muma Muma in the third round. A lot of okay. guys are moving to the third round. So my my two two round pace, I would probably go. Um, Trey McBride, if he's there. Yep. Um, if he's not, um, Zion Jordan, the, the guard from BC, he's one you want to look at, I think. Zion Johnson, yeah, Zion Johnson's a beast, man. He, he, he started since the crush. That's it. You're out of here. <laughs> You've been ejected from the cockpit, brother. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, I saw Alex dropped in with a super chat. One of our last ones, Alex. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Bam, Alex. He says, thanks for having me. Looking forward to next time. Hopefully it won't drag on and get booted next time. See, I got to get better at like letting people talk because I wind up talking over people and then you wind up shrinking your time or I wind up shrinking your time. Uh, but dude, I always appreciate the, the conversation. Those are good questions and great points. Um, all right, boys and girls, I am going to call that a night. I will be back tomorrow night with Greenbean, O'Leary, and Jake Asman. If you guys want to see that, make sure you drop a like on this video. Leave a comment on this video afterwards, and you'll be qualified for our t-shirt giveaway tomorrow. So we're going to give away a t-shirt tomorrow at the end of our stream. And all you have to do is drop a comment. Boys and girls, it's been a lot of fun hanging out with you. My name is Ryan. This is Jets Talk signing off. J-E-T-S!